Welcome to Doorways to Learning, where we open doors to discover, to review, to entertain the best practices educators are using in classrooms all over the world. Last week, we explored the powerful use of the higher order thinking question, what if, and how it can reframe and really revitalize our vision of what's possible in our lives. So what what if question did you come up with to reframe something that happened or is going to happen in your life? Please let me know. Today, we're going to do something that's also, it can be life-changing. How many of you believe that physical problems are indications of an emotional or internal conflict? The very word disease explains this concept perfectly. When we separate the prefix from the noun, it's easy to see that diseases are really the body's lack of ease in assimilating something happening internally or externally. I, for one, am blessedly free of physical problems, which is pretty funny given that my emotions are more like a theme park of ups and downs and sideways dynamics. But fortunately, they seem to be processed as quickly as they enter, except for swollen fingers in the winter. If you want to have like a huge gasp, just give me a video call and I will show you some scary fingers. So I've recently started watching an extraordinary podcast with Marie Manucheri, who's a licensed nurse and also an intuitive healer. And what she does is she gives people energy readings on the airwaves. You just have to send her a recording and she gets everything about you. It's extraordinary. And I'm waiting for her to give me a reading on what swollen fingers mean on the emotional spectrum. In the meantime, these fingers just remind me that it's important to do everything we can to create and maintain a healthy emotional environment for ourselves, for our coworkers, for our children, and for our students. And I found that emotional health is so important that whenever schools hire me to do workshops on scaffolding techniques or phenomenon-based learning, I explain that first we need to strengthen the effective domain, how students feel in the learning environment that these schools want me to help the teachers create. Because only with a strong effective domain will the students and really the teachers also, will they all be able to relax and the information will flow from the brainstem into the frontal cortex. And I am going to give you a gift right now. That gift is an explanation of exactly what this dynamic is. And you can pass it on to everyone you know and impress them to no end. I mean, this is really lunchtime conversation to impress your friends. Here is a one sentence explanation of how emotions actually biologically dominate the entire learning process. No one you can know probably is going to really understand this except you now. And I'm gonna tell you in one sentence. Do you believe me? Get ready. All right, ready, set, go. New information enters the brain through the brain stem. And the brain stem guides this information fueled by brain chemicals to the limbic system, which just by chance is also known as the emotional center of the brain. And if the limbic system determines that the external environment, not the new information, The external environment is positive, for instance, praise from a person you value, a healthy breakfast or lunch you just had, wearing your favorite sweater. Then a figurative toll booth positioned directly on the other side of the limbic system lets the toll booth arm raise, and this new information flows through the limbic system to the frontal cortex, and learning happens. However, and you'll see I'm saved by this transitional word, however, which gives me a semicolon, and so we can still consider this the same sentence. If the limbic system, remember also called the emotional center of the brain, registers a negative external environment, an angry teacher, a disturbing message from a friend, a recent punishment from parents, then the toll booth keeps its arm firmly in the down position and new information stops in the limbic system. It's not processed by the rest of the brain. And so nothing or very little is learned. One sentence, one sentence. And now you can explain the entire dynamic of the effective domain to anyone you meet on the street. Go ahead and stop people and give them this sentence and see how impressed they are with you or how quickly they call the police. One or the other, who knows, you won't know until you try it. So. 
We've just learned about the affective domain, and it actually has primacy over the cognitive and the psychomotor domains, if we're speaking bloomies, because unless that toll booth arm goes up and information passes through the limbic system and goes to the frontal cortex and is processed, cognitive and psychomotor skills are just not going to flourish. Now, this whole dynamic has become so important to me that I've created an entire course on the subject because I want you to know how to raise that toll booth arm and fill up your toolbox of educational strategies so that you have an effective domain that is the envy of all the other teachers in the school. And then hopefully they will copy you and ask you for these um, strategies and techniques and everyone is going to have just an incredible learning environment. That's what we all want, right? So that's a a little teeny shameless advertisement for an online course, very unique, that I'm about to publish. You can go to the link in the show notes and it will lead you to the course. And you can tell me, this is really fun. I'm going to give you a special offer here. If you can tell me why I've chosen Groundhog's Day to launch it, yes, think of the movie, you will get an extra special offer. So in the meantime, I will let you know what this incredible energy here healer says about my swollen fingers. And next week, we're going to be speaking with Jake Ruzzi, who's going to give us some answers about what our responsibility is in modeling appropriate behavior to our students in and outside of the classroom. And I also throw him a curveball, and you're going to see how he deals with that. Very unfair of me, very unfair, but man, did he come through. Um, He gives some incredibly thoughtful and special answers. And in the meantime, please have fun in your classroom and at home, and I will see you next week for more.